Hey everyone, we're gonna do advanced photo storage part three today. So first of all, you'll notice the different location. I'm actually at my parents' house today because they wanted to install a NAS to back up their photos. So what we're gonna do today is walk through that whole process so that you guys can do it at home. A couple quick notes though before we dive in. Number one, you're gonna want to make sure and remember that, well actually, even before I do that, watch part one and part two. I should mention that. I linked them down in the description. I'm gonna to refer to them quite a bit today. So make sure that you've watched the previous episodes of this series before we do this one. A couple quick side notes though. Number one, this is a networked drive. And what I mean by that is it actually needs to connect to your home network. So when you're planning a NAS installation, you need to find your home router, right? Your router is basically looks like this. It's gonna have antennas sticking out of it. And a lot of people have two internet devices that they think of as their internet devices, a modem and a router. Some people have an all-in-one device. But what you wanna find is your router. And your NAS needs to directly connect to your router. And it's gonna connect, usually they're yellow from most brands, but it's gonna connect to one of these open yellow ethernet ports on the back of it. So you wanna keep that in mind. Um, maybe your router is not in the room that you eventually want it to be in or where you wanna store your NAS. So just kinda of keep that in mind as you're working. The other thing to think about is that you can connect to your NAS wirelessly. It's a networked device, which means if you're on the Wi-Fi in your house, if your NAS is connected to your router, you can connect to your NAS just through Wi-Fi, which is really, really cool. But we talked a lot about bottlenecks in the last episode. You gotta keep in mind that if you are gonna connect to your NAS wirelessly, the bottleneck is gonna be your, inner, your wireless connection speed to your router. So what I would recommend is if you're gonna be using your NAS quite often, especially if you're gonna be working and editing off of your NAS, you're gonna to wanna to get your router put in a room where your computer can plug into your router and the NAS can plug into your router. And you might say, but my computer doesn't have an ethernet port. That's fine, they sell ethernet to USB adapters and you can plug directly into your router, no problem. Alternative to that, you can run ethernet cable, you can buy big boxes of a thousand foot of ethernet cable for very cheap and you can run cable throughout your house so that you can connect to things wherever you want. Simplest solution, long story short, I recommend putting your router in a room that you want your computer to be most of the time as well as your NAS to live. The second note is that this setup that we're going for today is not a working NAS. And what I mean by that uh, is it works, but it's not a design for a NAS that they are going to actively edit off of. Let me explain that a little bit. Um, this is a two bay NAS, which is really well suited for a backup uh, system. And that's what they're gonna use it for. My parents are both gonna be backing up their main photo hard drives to this NAS. Never are they going to be working and editing directly off of it. They're gonna be backing up to it. And the reason that's important is the two bay NAS is gonna be configured in RAID 1. And again, I'm gonna start throwing RAID out there. That was the last episode, so make sure that you've watched that. This is gonna be set up in RAID 1. And a two bay NAS set up in RAID 1 is fine for backing up, but if you're gonna be using a NAS as everyday photo editing, you're probably gonna to wanna to get a four bay or a five bay NAS that you can set up with RAID uh, five or RAID six. And again, we talked about that in the last video. That's just gonna get you more speed and it's gonna still have the same redundancy. So that's something to think about. The other thing to think about is if you're a video editor, you are gonna to wanna to make sure if you're planning on editing video off of your NAS, that you are running 10 gigabit networking. This is all assuming gigabit, all assuming your standard like Cat5 ethernet cable, nothing special. If you wanna do video, that's gonna require 10 gig networking, which isn't complicated, it's just adding an extra layer to the whole setup. You would need a 10 gig switch, you would need a 10 gig adapter for your laptop or your desktop, and you would need a NAS that's capable of doing 10 gigabit as well. So what do we need in order to do this? Fairly simple to do this setup process. Obviously you need to know where your router is, super simple. You're gonna need a laptop that can connect to your home internet, can be a, a, can be a, a desktop too, a computer that can connect to your home internet, preferably nearby to the NAS. You're gonna need the NAS itself. And again, the last video we talked about some, we're gonna be using the DS218 Plus in this video. Again, it's a really nice two bay NAS with a really fast processor, which they were after because they might be running Plex, which is a multimedia server so they can store their movies and things like that on this drive as well. So super simple. And then we're also going to need some hard drives. Now for hard drives, I recommend two kinds. 
Uh, Western Digital Red drives. Here's a 12 terabyte WD Red drive. We'll take it out of the packaging soon. Um, they have two 12 terabyte red drives. Um, also Seagate makes their Iron Wolf and Iron Wolf Pro series. Those would be other drives that I recommend, but you're gonna wanna get drives, either WD Reds or Seagate Iron Wolfs that are designed to be in a NAS. You don't wanna get any old drive and just toss them in there because they're not made to be spinning all the time and the NAS is gonna keep them doing that. The other thing I'll recommend with hard drives is go on uh, Synology's website. I linked this in the last video. Uh, go on their website and use their RAID calculator to figure out how big of a drive you should get or drives you should get in order to get enough storage when you plan for redundancy. All right, now that we have all of our pieces and we have everything that we're gonna need, the first step is to actually take these drives, open them up and put them into the NAS itself. Before we power anything on or anything like that, we wanna actually physically install the drives. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Shouldn't take but a couple minutes, pretty easy open this up. We're gonna go ahead and get those drives installed. So uh, these drives actually have what are called drive trays, which are what hold the drive inside the NAS. And it's really simple. You actually just pull up on a little tab and you pull this tray out. And the tray is what the hard drive sits in. So it's really easy. You don't actually need any tools. You can just pull these plastic tabs out. There's a little button that says pull or a little word that says pull. And we can pull this out and pull this one out. And then we simply slide the drive in there and put these back and that holds the drive still without using any sort of tools or anything like that. All right, so now that we have everything unpacked and we have the drives installed, I just took the extra stuff out of the box just to show you guys what's included. Very simple, it's the NAS itself, and then we've got a power adapter that we'll plug into the wall, and then they also do give you an ethernet cable, which is really helpful, so we're gonna take that and we're gonna plug that right in. Just to show you guys on the back of the NAS, because I think there's some uh, pretty common confusion a lot of times with this, you will see some USB ports back here. Um, those are not to connect the NAS to your computer. And a lot of people think like, oh, I can just plug in via USB. No, a NAS inherently is a networked device. So there's no way to plug it into your computer directly via USB. Instead, you're gonna use the ethernet port. I don't know if I'm pointing at that, but it's the ethernet port back here. And we're gonna connect the ethernet port, like I said, to our router. And that's how we're gonna to connect to this. Those USB parts are actually for expansion. If you wanna add an external hard drive to your NAS to add more drives to it, you can do that with that USB port. So that's why those are there. They're not to connect directly to your computer. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take the NAS, I'm gonna plug it into the wall and I'm gonna turn it on. And then I'm going to use the ethernet cable to connect it to my parents' router. Once you do that, once it's on, you'll see the lights whirring and you'll see that the, um, the power is working on it and you'll probably see a light when you plug it into the router. Once that's all done, we're gonna let it sit for about a minute and then we're gonna pop onto the computer and all the rest of the configuration actually happens on the computer end of things, not on the NAS end of things. Again, we're gonna plug directly from the NAS into, let me grab it right here, one of the yellow ports on the back of our router. We're gonna go ahead and do that. We'll wait a minute and then I'll catch back in with you guys. All right, so I've left the NAS plugged in for about a minute now. It's turned on and it's plugged into my router as well. And I just heard the NAS beep, which usually means that it is ready to go. What you wanna do from this point on is actually go to on your web browser on your computer. And again, the computer has to be connected to the network, whether that's wireless or whatever. You can see I'm wirelessly connected to the network right now. That's totally fine. You wanna to go to the website find.synology.com. And that's actually in the instruction book too, so you can just read up there. But really easy, you go to find.synology.com and that takes you to this. This is the Synology Web Assistant. And what it does is as soon as you go to that website, it actually searches for NASs that are on your network. Um, and so right here, you can see that it found my DS218 Plus without having to do anything. It just searched for it and found it. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna connect to the NAS and it's gonna ask me to accept the EULA, that's okay. And we're gonna get taken in. Now what we have to do from here is actually configure the NAS. We actually have to set it up because right now it's an unconfigured NAS. It's just a box, right, with two hard drives in it. So I'm gonna hit the setup button and uh, it wants me to install the latest version of the disk station. So let's see, data on the hard drives will be removed during installation, are you sure you wanna proceed? This is basically just saying that when you do this, it's gonna format those hard drives. Again, 
formatting means erasing all, they're making you check something, you gotta understand that you might lose all of your data in this instance. So we're gonna hit okay here, and it's gonna go ahead and install an update. I'll catch back with you guys as soon as this is done. All right, so the NAS just installed updates. It took about seven minutes. You could hear the, the drive spinning up and spinning down. And now we're left with this screen right here that says create your administrator account. Now, one thing that's really cool about NAS is, is that multiple users can use them all at the same time as long as they're inside of your home's network. And they can even log in remotely, which is really cool. But what we're doing here is we're setting up what the admin account for the NAS is. And the thing to think about here is if you're like a, um, say a business owner and you want to give your employees access to certain files on your NAS, but not all of them, this is the admin account. So this is the account that you're gonna set up for yourself with your username and your password, and then you can create other users that have limited access, but this is the one that gets everything. For server name, it can be whatever you want. I'm just gonna go with nj underscore media, because my parents' name are Neil and Jean. For username, I'm gonna make it admin because it's admin and password, I'm gonna make it something that only I know that I will give to them later. So I'm gonna go ahead and confirm that right here and we are going to hit next. Obviously all of this can change, it's just setting it up initially. Now what that does is it's asking us if we wanna set up Quick Connect. Now what Quick Connect is, I'm actually gonna set this up later, but Quick Connect is an ability to access your NAS remotely meaning you could be at your friend's house or in another country, wherever it happens to be, and you can use your Quick Connect login to access your NAS at your house from anywhere in the country. It's super easy, it just requires that you create a Synology account in order to do that. I haven't talked to my parents about whether they wanna do this yet, so right now I'm just going to say skip this step and I'm gonna skip this one. You can always turn this on later, um, it's not a big deal at all. Now it's asking if we want to install recommended packages. I'm gonna go ahead and skip this as well because I just wanna get in and get through to the NAS setup to walk you guys through that process. One advantage of the NAS, like we talked about, is that there are tons of applications and programs that your NAS can run. We talked a little bit about the backup one the other day where you can have your NAS back up your media to the cloud automatically. There's also media management. There's tons of things that the NAS can do. So I definitely recommend checking out those packages, but I'm not going to install them by default. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm not going to go ahead and locate that. This NAS isn't going to be going anywhere. We're going to go ahead and hit go. And I'm going to say, got it. And I'm going to say, sure, I want device analytics. And we're going to say, I, I approve that. And we're going to hit OK and yada, yada, yada. And we're in. Cool, so we're in now, it gives us the little tips, it shows us what's good, and whew, we made it through. So that's the setup, it's really easy, just make, basically making an admin account and going from there. Now, before we get into the actual configuration, because we can't actually put anything on the NAS yet, I wanna just say a couple quick things. The first is how to access the NAS. I think it's important to know how to do that. And NASs are accessed via an IP address. Uh, and an IP address is a series of four numbers with dots in between them. And you wanna remember your NAS's IP address because it's going to be that way that you access it. So you wanna make sure you remember it. That lives right here on my screen. We can see under the system health section, there's a little section that says LAN for local area network. And the IP address of my parents' NAS on their home network is 192.168.1.132. So that is this specific NAS's location on the network. And that's something that you might wanna write down, have, have somewhere. Um, you can also go into your router settings and tell your router to always give the NAS that IP address because sometimes that IP will change on you and you're not able to access your NAS at some point. And if that ever happens to you, what you can do is just go to that find.synology.com again and it will find it and it will give you the IP address. So it's not like it lost it forever, but it's just good to remember that number. So what I wanna do now is actually give ourselves some storage. So we need to set up what's called a storage pool and a volume on the NAS. And this is really the last step before we can actually use this thing, which is really cool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here to the upper left and I am gonna go to the storage manager. This is where we're gonna manage all of our storage and things like that. And right now it might've actually already done it. It actually did do it automatically for me. That's really cool. It might not do this though if you have more uh, than two drives though. So I definitely think we should talk a little bit about it. Uh, basically you have what's called a storage pool and your storage pool is the joint conglomeration of both of your drives. Um, you can see right now I have a 10.9 terabyte and 10.9 terabyte. Unfortunately, it's a bummer when you buy a 12 terabyte drive, you only get like 10 and a half, 11 terabytes of actual storage. 
but you can see it actually auto configured mine in what's called SHR, Synology Hybrid RAID. Essentially that's RAID 1 in the case of having a single drive. Again, go back to the previous video and see that. I do want to point out though that if it created this wrong, you can always remove it and you can create a new storage pool with a different type of RAID. So here's my warning to you guys. You want to be sure that the storage pool section is configured the way that you want it before you put data on the drive. Because as soon as you put data on the drive, doing any manipulation with storage pools requires you to format the hard drive, format the NAS, and that'll wipe out all your data. So make sure all this configuration stuff is good and set before you get into actually putting information on it. In this case, I want SHR, I want RAID 1, so that's perfect. It's got both drives here, 10.9 terabytes per drive, which is perfect. Um, I can go up to this little dashboard right here and I can add myself another widget, one for storage. And we can see that I have, let me expand this down a little bit, I have used capacity of 60 megabytes, total available of 10.47 terabytes. So that means that this NAS has 10 and a half terabytes of usable redundant storage for myself, which is super, super sweet, or for my parents, because they're gonna be the ones using it. All right, so we've set up our storage pool, or it's been set up automatically, which is super sweet, and you're sure that everything is set. And again, be sure of that, because it's gonna wipe all your data whenever you have to change any of that stuff. The next thing that we wanna do is set up what's called a shared folder. And the reason that you need a shared folder is shared folders are at the level at which you can set what users have which access to which things. And what I mean by that is I'm actually gonna set up eventually a shared folder for my parents for each of them. So my dad will have a folder and my mom will have a folder and they both will be able to access the other person's folder but not without going through some rigmarole. And the whole idea of that is if you're a business owner or you're someone who needs other people to have access to some of your files, you can indicate which shared folders someone has access to or another person has access to. So that's all done at the shared folder level. Now inside of a shared folder, you have unlimited access to do whatever you want inside of that meaning create folders, drag files, all the stuff like that. But shared folders, you can say some people have access to some of them, other people have access to others. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna to go to the file station and I'm gonna go ahead and it actually tells me I don't have a shared folder, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And we're gonna make one. So I'm gonna make one for my mom first. We're gonna call it Jean. And description, that's just optional for you, you can have that. I'm gonna disable recycle bin, because the way that a NAS works, if you don't want a recycle bin, it just means when you delete something, it's actually gone, which is the way that I want this to function. I'm gonna click next. We don't need to encrypt it, there's nothing, uh, no one's gonna be like attacking their network, so I don't have to worry about that. Don't need to worry about data integrity, and then you can also set up a folder quota. So a folder quota is if you want to uh, basically set aside some of your storage for being for a specific person. I could limit her shared folder at like two terabytes or something like that. In this case, she has unlimited storage, so we're gonna hit next here. And it just gives you a run through of how it's gonna configure it. Super simple, it's gonna put it on volume one, that's our only volume, and it's gonna name it Gene. I'm gonna hit apply here. So real simple, it creates that. And now it's gonna ask us who gets permission to access this folder. And you'll notice that admin always gets read write to everything. Obviously the admin account needs to be able to read to every folder and write to every folder because it's the admin account. But you can set up as many users as you want. At RMSP, our big NAS we have there, we have like 20 users and every user has individual read, read write, no access to each individual shared folder on the NAS. So as many users as you have, you'll see here, and you set users up just in the control panel. Very, very easy. In this case, I want admin to have read write. I'm gonna hit okay, and we have a shared folder. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means that now when we access the NAS outside of the web portal, right? We're still on, uh, I'm on Google Chrome right now. This is still through the web portal. This means when I access the NAS outside of the web portal, I'm going to see a folder now called Gene that I can interact with. So check this out. This is how easy this is. So let's pretend that all that's configured, we're all set. I'm just gonna close Google Chrome now. Let's look at how easy it is to access this NAS. So step number one is obviously be connected to the network, whether that's plugged in or wirelessly, however you wanna be, you gotta be on the network. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're going to go to a file explorer browser or on Mac, you're gonna to go to Go connect to server. The go menu is part of the finder application. So make sure you're running finder, go go, connect to server. PC, you just open up a file browser window. And in this little top bar, I'm just going to tap double backslash and I'm gonna to go to 192.168.1.132. 
which if you remember from our discussion before, that's the IP address of that specific NAS. We're gonna hit enter. It's gonna ask for a username and password. Well, we already set that up. Admin is the username. And then I have a secret password that I'm not gonna tell all of you. <laughs> and I'm gonna say remember, and we're gonna hit okay. So now you can see there's a folder called Gene and our computer just connected to it. So you guys, this folder now, we can do anything we want to. It's just like any other folder on our computer. I can make a new folder on it, call it my photos. I can drag images to it. I can delete things. I can add things. I can do whatever I want to do. If I wanted to set up a second shared folder, I can have that. And when I connect to that IP address, we'll see that second folder there as well. And I'll be able to connect to it. So that's the difference. The way that I want to kind of summarize this whole video is once things are configured and obviously play around with it, because there's a lot of things that a NAS can do. But to summarize, once things are configured, instead of plugging in the drive and it popping up on your desktop on a Mac or in this PC on a PC, all you've got to do is on a Windows machine, you've got to open File Explorer, click inside of that top bar and do double backslash and then the network address, which is that little IP address that's there on the web portal. On a Mac, you're going to go to Go, connect to server and type in the IP address and get to it that way. That's all you gotta do. Once you type that in, you have full access to the NAS, just like you had a hard drive plugged into your computer. And what's really cool about it is I'm able to access it right now, no hard drive, no, nothing plugged in. There's no extra stuff here. I'm accessing the NAS completely wirelessly, which for most things is great. The last thing I wanna say is any configuration happens through the web portal on both Mac and PC. So if you need a new shared folder, if you wanna set up a new application on the NAS, whatever it is, you're gonna do that through the web and you're just gonna to go to your web address. You're gonna type in the IP address of the NAS. So 192.168.1.132 and I'm gonna hit enter and it's gonna ask me to log in. We can see the NAS right here. I'm gonna go admin and password. And just like this, we're gonna hit sign in and boom, here we are and we're able to manage things like shared folders, users and stuff like that. So through the web, we can manage all that through File Explorer or Finder, we're able to access the files that way. Also, a little side note, if you're using SyncBack or Carbon Copy Cloner, both of those programs can set the NAS as their source or their destination for backing up, which is super sweet. All right, what I want you guys to do is let me know in the comments if you want another video that dives more deep into these features, because I can definitely do that. If you want to learn more about the Synology Web Manager, let me know in the comments. Hit that like button if you guys like this video. I think all of you know enough now to set up a NAS and start using it, which is super, super awesome. So hit that like button if you appreciate this video and you liked it. You know what to do if you didn't like it. If you guys wanna subscribe, hit the button down there or up there to subscribe to our channel. And lastly, I just wanna say thank you for watching. If you watched through all parts of this, I really appreciate it and I will catch you guys in the next one. Let me know if you have questions down below and we'll see you guys later.